So I was just noticing that I am the anti of all of the current hat trends of the flat brim. Yeah, you are. I mean, well, I mean, you're you are of a time. I'm of a time. Yes. Yeah, I'm of the same time. I, I like. Well, maybe not. Maybe not that curled, but but I I don't I don't want the flat. No. I, I'm not happy about the flat. Although it is it it sort of fit. Yeah. You're a hat shaper, baseball cap hat shaper. Yeah. Shaper. Yeah. You gotta shape that. Brim. I mean, if you think about it, when when I was playing baseball as a kid, we would roll it in because essentially mm -hmm. it was like blinders for us so that we, when we that's were, a good thing yeah. is that a good thing in baseball I well just know. like like it well as an outfielder it kind of gave me the tunnel oh. vision to see and not get distracted yeah. and also it it sort of oh, it yeah, sort yeah, of acted yeah. as you know I, I i couldn't even though i wanted to play with sunglasses we weren't allowed to so oh really yeah I remember growing up and, and like wanting to be a pilot and, and just hearing like, well, if you have to wear glasses, you can't be a pilot. Yeah. Right. And it was just crushing, soul crushing because that week, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. Right. So, so, so little, little <laughs> known fact. So when I dropped out of college architecture school for a while, because as some people do, they were money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and school costs money. And school costs yeah. money. I mean, and if it, it, it is a business, yeah. yes, right, right. You can't just you can't just keep going if if you're not paying the money. I had right. debated about going back into the army, and so I went through the steps to look to reenlist and all of that other stuff. What was interesting, yeah, is that because I had been out for so long, they wanted me to actually retake the ASVAB. Okay, what's that? So it is because that's a great acronym right there. Jeez, the ASFAB, the acronym for the ASFAB is. Yeah, I know. You have to look it up. Real, real time, real time follow up here. <laughs> okay, how'd you do on the ASFAB? Yeah, so the ASFAB is. Help me out here. You play the Jeopardy uh, theme doom, song doom, while you're doom, looking up doom, things doom, in real time doom, on the doom, Google. Doom, doom. Can you just give me the heck? What, what does it mean? What does it mean? You gotta ask ChatGPT. You can't. Yeah, you can't ask Google that. You gotta ask ChatGPT. So it is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. It is a multitude multiple aptitude battery that measures developed abilities that helps predict future academic and occupational success in the military. <laughs> Wow. It just just having the word battery in there makes it sound so much more daunting and, and yeah. difficult. Right. Yeah. It's like it it's just it's that that thing that's just out of reach and Well, you know when they you know when people say, Well, we have to run a battery of tests on you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. It means that they've got to run a lot, right? So we have many tests. Exactly. All the tests. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so I, so since I had already been through three years of architecture school at the time and a couple of years prior to that before I transferred. <laughs> speaking of batteries, yeah. speaking of a battery of tests. Exactly. <laughs> I'd just been through three years of architecture school. Doesn't that count? It, what, was, what was interesting <laughs> is, so, you know, when most of, I don't know, say 17-year-old kids who are thinking about military as a career will be taking the ASVAB test as, okay. you know, and, and so I did well enough to get a decent job when I was coming out of high school and going into the army and did decent enough to get to a, a decent job. Well, so then because it had been so long since that had occurred, you know, that, that tested been taken they said that i just have to retake it I'm like all right all right that's not that big of a deal it's, it's just <laughs> like the are i was just like i mean they expire right exactly. you got the you got the rolling clock you exactly. just don't know what the rolling clock is in the army and and maybe this time i won't fall asleep in the middle of it which i did oh, in the what? first one <laughs> So I did. <laughs> okay, so so this is very different than an ARE because yeah. the ARE, you are so stressed out, yeah. right? You're just on 
you're you're just running on adrenaline. Right, right. The clock is ticking. You've got this many questions. You got to go through it right. two or three times. You got to mark all the questions. Oh, that yeah, questionable yeah, yeah. Out. Oh, you yeah. Go back and do them again. There's no chance in there's, hell you're going to fall asleep no in an ARE. How does this happen in the ASVAB? Um, the questions were boring. <laughs> you're boring me. Yes, that's <laughs> just, I could just if, I could just see you raising your hand and you're like, um, can you what? This question like, is so boring. I was like, seriously? Okay, this can, is... Do you have any examples? I want to know. I want to know. Like, give me an example uh, of a know, boring I, question. I, honestly. I, You're like, I don't know. I, I was sleeping through exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Here. <laughs> okay. They have You're best... back on Google. Well, wait, wait. <laughs> yes, exactly. No, um, they have. <laughs> so they have questions for general science, word knowledge, mathematical knowledge, automotive information, mechanical comprehension. Arithmetic reasoning, paragraph comprehension. I think I could ace this test. Elec this, this, these... Exactly. <laughs> Electronics information, <laughs> shop information, and assembling op assembling objects. Oh, my gosh. This test was made for me. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. It, to be quite honest that with you, amazing. I mean, if you think about it, like, for people like us that are, like, tinkerers, and it very yeah. much is. I've been taking stuff apart since I was three years exactly. old. Exactly. Yeah. And, and so what was funny is so <laughs> I outscored most of the people when I was in high school, even though I fell asleep. Even That's what I was going to yeah. say. Here's the punchline. I outscored people and I was sleeping in the test. <laughs> I was sleeping in the test. <laughs> now, fast forward to many decades later, and I did take the test. And this time I didn't fall asleep. And I blew it out of the water. There was there literally no, like I was the, gonna, the, I was like the punchline here is that you put you scored worse. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been hilarious. So the guy came out. Wow. He was just like, "You can have any job in the army." Yeah, and and was, I was just he was like trying to get you get you out of architecture yeah. at that point. He's and like, so we want, we want you exactly, Mister Phelan. <laughs> oh, so it's it's fun. some people, Uncle see Sam. It. Yeah, some people every once in a great while well, see the the poster behind me that has that that on there. Um, but uh, let's see if we uh, it, get out, of, move out of the way, and then no, let your camera focus. No, on because it. the one behind, <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not because of the one behind me. <laughs> there is other incriminating there's, evidence. There is one similar to that one, but directly behind me that you can sort of see there. But it's a little different. Yeah, but you're not going to allow it. No, you're not going to allow it to focus on that no. one. Yeah, it's art. It is it's art. art. Well, it, it is. You can't have an here. opinion about art. Look at that. Okay, that's all you get. That's all you're you gonna get. You're going to have to pause. You're going to have to freeze frame on that. Exactly. Can't believe you actually uh, allowed that <laughs> right know. there. A peek behind the curtain. <laughs> the iron curtain. Uh, <laughs> As it were. Yeah. yeah. So so the guy comes. So they, they, tried, to, they so, tried to entice you. So the guy you comes out. Any job said, you want. You, you can army. have any job. Like, you know. And I was like, well, I sort of kind of want to have my old job. And they're like, funny enough, your old job is not available. You didn't. You didn't ask the question like, well, what? What is there? Like, well, I, okay, I, did you already know? So, or what? Like, because I because to default back to like, I want my old job. Well, I wanted is, my old just, job. It just sounds a little naive. I'm gonna, no, no, I'm no, gonna no, put no. it out. I wanted there. my old job because where I left off when I got out was as I was an instructor for my old job and. It was basically responsible for cross-training people who are leaving their jobs or coming into the, the military in the Patriot Missile Defense System. And so I kind of liked that. I kind of liked having the responsibility <laughs> of educating people, you know? I kind of liked it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I sort of wanted to do that. but It's, it's good to have a job you like. I, I, I can understand But they that. said no. And then they're like, well, here are the two that you score. You can have any job you want, not that one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That... <laughs> yeah. So they did say, here are the two that you scored the highest, like your aptitude, um, whatever. You know, there, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of different, like, acronyms within the ASFAB that... Of course there are. And... <laughs> There's, there's a hierarchy of acronyms. Yeah. Yes. And then like the, the there's this GT, Jet General Technical Knowledge score, which apparently I blew off the charts, which was great. 
But so there were two that they gave me. And, and where all this was going was you were talking about wanting to be a pilot. And so mm -hmm. one of the two that for enlisted that they said I scored and aligned to was air traffic controller. And I was just like, and then the other one was a not air traffic controller. And so of the two, what? That's not a job. Not air traffic controller is not a job. <laughs> Come on. Do I have to say it out loud? Yes, yes, yes. So the two that I aligned closely to that they felt like my aptitude, my, and other factors yeah, yeah. were Get to air it. traffic Get to controller uh -huh. and interrogator. Inter <laughs> yes. I'm serious. I, I... <laughs> yeah. That sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Do with that like knowledge you as you behind, will. You can sit behind a computer for the rest of your life, a computer screen, right? Being an air traffic controller, which is what you chose to do going into architecture. Yeah. Or you can pick the hum the more human side. <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so he, I'm into, I'm into relationships and communication. So let me, what, what does that mean? I'm an interrogator. <laughs> so let me, let me, let me, I might as well, I already peeled the bandaid off, right? Maybe. This is a great story, man. This is, okay. this is what so, the show is all about right so here. The, yeah. So then the guy asked me, well, which one in 12 years in? 12 yeah. years in, we're getting this story, people. So Jeez. then the guy asked me, well, what are you interested in? And I was like, well, since I can't have my old job, which was shooting planes down, I guess I could crash them. <laughs> you said that? I said that. He's just like. <laughs> He's like, uh, you failed the test. No, no. He said, <laughs> so that's probably why uh, Interrogator popped up. <laughs> That is, yeah, with, that's, with, that is like exactly totally right. Skip, yeah. Without skipping a beat. There's a the, dark side. The, the, the jokes back and forth between <laughs> me and him were, his, he was just like, oh, and that's probably why the interior popped up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's. Acknowledge the dark side. Yes. Yeah, what, 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 what are the words here that Palpatine used to, uh, to entice Anakin to the dark side? So, so to go. Feel the dark side. Right, so to, to, to finally <laughs> finish this story and bring it back to where you were. Um, yeah, I don't even, it doesn't even matter. Said, <laughs> this has been well, amazing. <laughs> so to be an air traffic controller, I actually had to take the medical exam for that is the same medical exam that pilots have to take. Not, not to gear me towards obviously flight, but it was to understand flight and all of the other things and, and all of that other stuff. And so I actually did do that. And one of the interesting things that they did say, because you had mentioned about the glasses, and, and I've, I've had trouble having other people validate that this was true, but this was what I was told at the time when I was taking the, when I was, you know, going through these battery of tests, mm -hmm. was that if you sneeze in sunlight, you can't be a pilot. Okay. And so in me being blue eyed, one of the reasons why I used to roll my hat is because I tried to keep all this out of my eyes because I would, I sneeze in sunlight. Really? Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. So my, my youngest is, is, uh, you know, he's the guy in the photographs who's always like, you know, cause you're in the sun yeah. to light yeah. the face and he's like, it's literally torture oh, yeah, for him. Yeah. He doesn't sneeze. But he's just like I wear sunglasses like all the time. And I'm and if you're watching this on YouTube, you're getting some great still oh, shots yeah. of me right yeah. now. And and that that is it that's the thing that I equate it to, but it's it's different. <laughs> well actually so. what's funny is that when I don't wear sunglasses and I am outside and I don't have a hat on that's helping shade the sunlight, I'm squinting and kind of making the, the squinting and when you yeah. squint, keep it out. This is why you you've you've ultimately chosen architecture, so you can sit in your dark cave. Well, so hunched over drawings. So yeah. I'm in basic training, and I'm squinting because it's in I'm in the hot Texas sun, and mm -hmm. I'm squinting, which it also makes it look like I'm smiling. And the drill sergeant says, <laughs> "You're having a way too good of a time." <laughs> this drill sergeant drill sergeant is looking at me. It's like, 
What are you smiling what at? What are you smiling about? <laughs> and he's just like, do you like me? Do you think I'm pretty? Uh, I had to do 150 push-ups on the gravel because apparently I didn't think well, that he was pretty. It, it didn't matter what you answered. Oh, no. Even if you did think he was pretty, damned you were if still I did, damned do if I did push-ups. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Because if I said he was pretty, then I'd be doing 150 push-ups. If I said he wasn't Yes, sir, pretty, you're pretty, sir. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no drill sergeant. You are the prettiest. No, it was like, no drill sergeant. Oh, you don't think I'm pretty? <laughs> no drill sergeant. Great. Oh, I'm not pretty. Yes, drill sergeant. Oh, I am pretty. Like, <laughs> like forget it, dude. Just tell me what I'm supposed yeah, to do. Yeah. Just, just give me the number of yeah. push-ups that I have to exactly. do at this moment. Yeah. And it, and it was the, the, it wasn't like, the, what is it? The, it was like, not pea gravel, but it was like pea gravel, but broken. So it was like sharp. Mm. And mm -hmm. you're sitting there. And yeah, bare hands. And bare hands, and you're doing your little yeah. push-ups and having it just nice. constantly drive into your hands, and mm -hmm. yeah, lovely. It was all fun. <laughs> Man, uh, you have the best stories. That's great. It was, you know, there's yeah, there's yeah, those are the ones that I can tell. There's the, yeah, wait, I'm pretty sure that the statute of limitations is beyond. We, we should just, we should literally have story time with Cormac. Maybe it's members only. So you there have you to, go. it's behind. Go. We can put these behind the paywall. They're that good that we'll put them behind a paywall. And then, and then they're not just public. I don't want people to think of me differently. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're scared. You're a scared little, little boy. <laughs> no. <laughs> they would. And you're like, wow. You it 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 says so much. They're like, oh, it's interesting. That's I, why I heard somebody else. Somebody else did this recently with me, where they we recorded some podcasts, and they were very concerned about publishing those podcasts. And I'm like, we recorded them. They were. I I know it. I, I record a lot of podcasts. Right. You sound, it was amazing. Great stories, tons of wisdom, like a lot of great. And, and what he said was, he said, we spend so much time building the persona and, and crafting the perceptions and that, that this could change that. Like, like it, I was yeah. so vulnerable and it, and it was, it was like, I had cracked him open, right? <laughs> it, that was the idea. Yeah. That was that was that was that was how he felt, and and it was like, uh, okay, now this is all going to get shared, and I'm I don't know if I'm comfortable sharing that. So I, I think that's kind of what you're saying here. It's like this: uh, you, yeah. you've you've over 12 years on Arcaspeak, you've crafted this. You're a, you're a you're a hard ass, badass, uh, senior project architect who gets shit done, and you don't want people to know. The other side, what whatever these other, what's hiding in these corners of of your what, your true experiences. This episode is made possible with support from Chaos Enscape. Enscape is a plugin software that simplifies real time visualization for us in the architecture, engineering, and construction industry. Whether your go to design application is Revit, SketchUp, Rhino, ArchiCAD, or VectorWorks. Enscape lets you instantly create high-quality renderings by syncing data from your 3D model without additional import or export needed. Easily navigate every aspect of your design in real time and identify and resolve any issues you come across quickly. Plus, you can immerse your clients in VR to provide a tangible sense of the project. Enscape is the trusted choice of over 500,000 monthly users across 150 countries. They are soon launching something special that will make your 3D workflow the best 3D workflow for a special price. In the meantime, you can experience it for yourself for free at chaos-enscape.com slash trial-14 or simply by Googling Try Enscape. Thanks to Chaos Enscape for their support of this episode. And now let's get back to the conversation. Yeah, well... <laughs> Honestly, no. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's funny. Is one time I sat, I, I met up with some army buddies, and mm -hmm. we were sitting around telling stories about what we remembered from each other and the experiences that we had. And 
we stopped and we were like, there is no way anybody would believe that that really happened. And you, you think about it, it's just like, I mean, it, there was such, such interesting things going on at the time that we were in Germany at the tail end of the Cold War when the Soviet Union still existed and the Soviet Union had a presence in in Germany, you know, East Germany and, and West Germany, because I, mm -hmm. I was there when it was East Germany and West Germany still. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that we experienced, <clears throat> some of like the people coming up and approaching us and asking us questions, and then you basically realizing that they're, you know, a Russian agent trying to get information about our, you oh, know, God. missile system wow. and things like this. And we're, we're sitting there and we're talking. It's just like, there is no way anybody is going to believe us that, that this is true. <laughs> that that, you know, actually, that, happened. that actually happened. And, right. and sure enough, I mean, when you're like being woken up by CID, who the, basically it's What's that? CID is the army's version of like, well, it's criminal investigation division. And, um, you know, it's basically kind of like the army's FBI and they're w waking you up in your barracks, asking you questions about somebody who, you know, you had met in a bar and you're like, wait, first of all, how do you, do they pull the light over your it face? Was just like, first of all, how, like a bucket how do you of water? know that I was like talking to somebody they know in everything. the bar and like, they know everything. They, yeah. Well, they sort of did because apparently like somebody somebody was there or they were probably hailing that person. And then that person, mm -hmm. because <clears> they <throat> saw that person talking to us <clears throat> had, then they came to us and it was so, I mean, wow. Some of the weird things that went on, like, do you remember the old, I, I don't know. You were, you remember that, or I mean, they still exist. The, the car company Opal. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I don't know. Some, some reason. So there was the smell em vehicles. And yes, that's an acronym. What? smell em. What? Okay. Soviet, mili <laughs> Soviet military liaison mission. Okay. And, and smell em. In some time <laughs> when I can find where I packed it in, we used to, were issued little cards that said, how do you identify a smell em vehicle? And they used to drive around in these powder blue opals with yellow curtains around every window. And, and so, and then a highly tinted front glass and then curtains all the way around like the driver's side, passenger side, front and back windows, and even the back window. As they're like driving past like your boys and stuff, you can see like the curtains kind of open a little bit and like a camera lens sticking out oh, snapping off pictures okay. and everything else and and then us radioing back and forth to like the our lead convoy car in the rear convoy car and, and here's another story that like just it, it's kind of hard <laughs> to believe go. this Wait, like, before before you do yeah. this before you do this other story a baby blue car with yellow curtains does not seem too under the radar. It, I'm just going to put it out there. I, hey, I, I don't know why. I mean, but that was yeah. that was their choice. With yeah. with a yellow license plate with a Soviet flag, and I. I mean, maybe they wanted you to know that they were. Well, I mean, maybe maybe that was a I decoy. The, maybe no. maybe the real photography was going on from another angle, but that was and the decoy. It, it could, but here here's here's one that this just will stick in my memory for for all of my years. So here we are, we're driving, and here's this little car, kind of like we're in a two lane road, and on each side of it, the cool thing about Germany is they had the the guardrails along the side of the road that you know because of high speeds and stuff like that you know if you hit that you're not gonna like flip over or whatever i'm not sure but they had mm -hmm. these guardrails and so you know essentially you can't pass on the median because there's a guardrail there you can't pass on the other median because there's a guardrail there and here's this big convoy of of trucks 
big convoy of missile carrying vehicles and things like that and radar equipment and all of these other things and so normal, normal stuff, stuff going that down you the just road, normally yeah. see rolling down the road and of course you know here's this one little vehicle <laughs> driving taking photographs of us and everything else right <laughs> <laughs> sticking out and like so, a cl- yeah. thumb it's like a clown yeah. car. It's a, it's yeah. so we we call up the lead vehicle and say hey we see a, a smell of vehicle that's in our convoy and so the the lead vehicle basically peels off and kind of like backs into that lane you know and so they're basically locking them in and then the rear vehicle comes in and they come in behind them and so like you know here's the vehicle in the middle and then here's the two cars basically and then there's the whole convoy so they can't go anywhere Right. Yeah. Right. And then for some reason, in between two launchers, the dude takes a hard right and flips his car over the barrier. Whoa. <laughs> flips and Gotta rolls. Out. That was his eject. He, that, that he was hit the eject like... button. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. And, he... and everybody looked at each other like, did, did... no one's ever going to believe that that just happened. It was just like, did that just happen? Like, what? <laughs> What did we just see? Wow. Oh, geez. And it was like that's crazy. Oh my lord! This is straight out of like oh my Italian gosh! Job. It was <laughs> a Ronin or my something. Gosh. I mean, there was <laughs> there, there was just some crazy stuff that like I was telling somebody a couple of stories the other day, and they were just like, "No," I'm like, "Uh huh." <laughs> Like they didn't believe, <laughs> uh, really. And then, you know, wow. Yeah. And it's just a. Uh, I don't know how we get back to architecture with this. One. Well, I well that's the thing, right? It's like you. I I'm thinking as you're saying this. There's things that happen on projects, and people are gonna like. No oh. one's gonna believe. Oh that yeah. The, that the client just said that. Or there's the. Like this is so hard, and you're like, this is nothing. You yeah. you can't even believe the experiences I've already had. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I think there's two ways you can bring this back to architecture. I will basically. say, I will say, okay, well, so out on a job site one time we were walking and basically there was a clear path to walk through the site, but it was walking underneath a, an elevated forklift that had actually some stuff sitting on top of it. <laughs> yes. And sounds perfectly safe. Yeah. And so right. Where's OSHA? People people started, you know, walking and they were walking under it. And I like walked w- way around it. And they, they were like looking at me like, why'd you walk around it? I mean, like you, it, it took you like two, three more minutes. To, like, the things I've seen. <laughs> and then, the, <laughs> and then I told them a story of, of, a re- of the, gather around kids. of the reason why yeah. I don't walk under them. And yeah. They never walk, they've never walked under my, ever, after I told them that story. They will, they they made a pledge, I will never walk under a loaded forklift again. You should. That's ridiculous you, that they would even think that that would be like, oh, it's fine. I know. What are the chances? Exactly. Well. What are the chances? I've, I've unfortunately seen an experience, well, I have an experience, but I have seen somebody who experienced why you don't walk under. Yeah. I could have totally imagined. Yeah. You don't even have to say. Yeah. Like, we don't have to go exactly. there. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. It, no, it's obvious. Oh, I mean, yeah, the answer yeah. is it's obvious. Oh, a- abso- like, absolutely. Yeah, you don't put yourself in that position. Yeah. You know, it, it, it <laughs> is interesting, though, is because, like, a lot of our knowledge and a lot of the things that we do as we develop this knowledge, as we're working in the industry and experience construction administration, a lot of times when it is especially working on a lot of adaptive reuse, renovations, historic preservation, and things like that. The history of construction is interesting. Like, you know, I've, I've kind of, I probably have told you stories about some of the things that I've seen, like building techniques and things like that in Maryland during like the 60s. When, yes, you know, in some of the like (laughs) really, really strange things that they would do that would then, as we're remodeling something and we have to like deal with these things and you're just like, why would anybody ever do this? Like, this is the strangest construction technique ever. I mean, dog's planks. Dog's planks is. What's a dog? What's dog's planks? Docks. I believe it's D. Oh, I believe it's D O X. 
but okay. Doc's Plank. Explain this. Doc's Plank. This must be an East Coast thing. I've never heard of this. Not very many people have, but it was something that was very prevalent as a construction technique to construct elevated floors, concrete elevated floors in Maryland. And this is the okay. only place that I've ever seen it. Now, people have said that they've okay. seen something similar, but they call it something else. But I was I was taught that it was called Doc's Planks. And what it basically okay. is, is if you can visually imagine a CMU block wall mm-hmm. in a stacked bond. You know, so stacking mm-hmm. it up. Straight up. Yep. But then yep. have two routed channels within that where you have a, you grout in rebar mm-hmm. and lay it flat. And that's your floor system. Oh, whoa. Yeah. And it's a, Weird. and it's a tongue, tongue and groove system. Okay. And it's got these, basically it's, it's, it's a, it's a hollow core. And then. It's got the these two little grooves in them, and then the the grooves have got the the, the rebar. Get the sketchbook that, that, out. I need to see. Oh, what this I looks was like. out. You know, <laughs> yes. Um, this is a. It is. This is like I I try to I try to explain things to my wife, and I want to draw it, and she's like, "No, just say yeah. it." This is this is one this of those is one of those ones like, that you no, have draw it. exactly. You that, need to draw. That you have to. <laughs> it, this is absolutely one hundred percent one of those things that you. It's sounds complex. Well, what's complex is if you, if you're doing a renovation, and well, so and, and you know that that you've done this with K through twelve, where there's these kind of like levels of renovation there's like the you know patch and paint there's renovation mm-hmm. there's revitalization and then there's modernization and then a complete rebuild and yeah. all of that comes with like a level of like cash available from like you know the the state splits the money and then the um yeah and then the the county pays for a portion of it and the higher you, local bonds it, state yeah. bonds yeah yeah so yeah. like the the yeah. higher you get to a complete renovation or like a like modernization gets less state money than a revitalization but the school system wants a modernization but they want you to call it a revitalization because they can get more money from it but they you know yeah right and hopefully people from the state of Maryland state board of education they're, are listening to this they're not listening but Th- this happens on every well, job you call a room yeah. something yeah, else exactly you exactly. just change the name of the room so that yeah right, yeah it's ridiculous uh yeah don't call something occupied um in yeah <laughs> I, I didn't <laughs> redact yeah. this this section let me, let me, of the podcast has yeah, been redacted exactly. let me black yeah. that out a little bit <laughs> so so with the with these docks planks you can't, you, you have to, you can't like, um, if you're core drilling through the docks planks to like, say, put a toilet room in uh, that, you can't mm-hmm. cut through the tongue and groove portion. So it, it really is a, a 16 inch block that's got tongue and groove on both sides that, so it slides into each other, but it also like lengthwise, it is a stacked block. It, there is no tongue and groove there. It, it relies on the basically the the steel cables to kind of hold it in place that's crazy so you can't pierce the steel cables you can't You're pierce telling the, me the floor cables. is made out of cmu block yes yes what with like i thought that's what you were saying yeah. a minute ago and then i was like there's no way oh and now gosh, you keep it is, saying it, it is, and i'm just like what yeah <laughs> let that sink in because that's what i'm saying it's like <laughs> some of the craziest things that i've ever seen in my so when we were doing the historic preservation revitalization additions to Annapolis Elementary School. Now, this is a building that was built, originally built, the the first portion of it was built in uh, 1886. Then it was later added onto in 1894. Then it was later added onto in 1903. Then it was later added onto in 1930. And then it was later added onto in 1977, 1985, and then the adjacent building that we were connecting it to 
to make a much bigger one was built in 1905, then later added onto in 1930, but then suffered a fire and oh was renovated, renovated. Um, it takes a special kind of architect to practice on the East Coast. Oh my gosh. And so, and so then, you know, here we are in, in neither one of these buildings, at least a good 70% of all of the buildings that I had to touch and renovate. 70% of them did not have a foundation. The wall just got <laughs> thicker and thicker and thicker and only 12 yeah. inches <clears throat> below grade did it just, just sit sitting on the dirt flat on the dirt. Nice. And but this was coastal. Like so this was coastal Annapolis, Maryland where you know you have high water tables and stuff, but this was interestingly enough this was built on the old shipping docks there there's some there's there's some pretty bad history of those old shipping docks but um old shipping docks that underneath it as kind of let's just call it the stabilization of the site was old um pre-colonial warehouse coastal warehouses that they basically just, you know, like filled in stone and everything else mm -hmm. and, yep. you know, and then just over time built over it. The pro the yep. property was owned by the Carroll family, which was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. So, you know, that was kind of cool just to like kind of get geeked out about, you know, some history and stuff. But the construction techniques, as you saw... <laughs> That's through, a strong word. Exactly. Techniques. Through, <laughs> through each of these buildings were, it was just, it was something that was so amazing that you were just like, how, how is this still standing? Like, right. this is standing by sheer will. Well, and but, what's funny is like you, if you try to tear something down, yeah. it's really hard, actually. Oh, yeah. Like all those oh, yeah. nails and all those bolts and whatever going in different directions is doing something magical but I, that you can't really explain. But I will say that – I now I say this. is like, how is it still standing? Honestly, it was built so well. Also, it, I mean, it was just like, yeah, we definitely don't build that way anymore. Um, <laughs> there was a craft but, to the madness. But when you had yeah. a 30-inch thick – solid brick wall i mean you know it's not coming down yeah where's it gonna yeah, go it's not yeah coming where's down. it gonna go although right. then when you look at the 1930 they matched the thickness of the wall but they left a cavity in there and just basically filled it full of rubble yeah. you're like well yeah. why, why'd they do that and then when you went to like the the mid 70s renovation of the the 1930s edition they built all of the interior partitions out of terracotta block but then they put as a wall finish they put uh which one glaze block so but it was a facing glaze block along mm -hmm. that and and so what was interesting is they removed all of the lockers and we're all standing in the hallway staring down and we kind of see the glaze block sort of leaning a little bit. And then we hear mm -hmm. this like, in the whole damn... <laughs> Shouldn't have taken those lockers out. <laughs> and, and we're now talking about... <laughs> those were structural lockers. <laughs> they were structural screws <laughs> because all of that glazed uh, block facing just fell off. And this is why you don't walk, walk under a... And uh, that's why you don't uh, walk under... Forklift. Exactly. And that's why you don't walk under... <laughs> and that is why you, you wear your PPE on those sites. And so, But we're talking about a wall that was probably about... Uh, say, like, the glazed block was about 15 feet tall. And the corridor was easily about 80 feet long. That whole entire facade just dropped off. Now, we were not oh planning on doing any demo work there. It decided oh, to do no. demo work on its own. Yeah, self-demo. Yeah, it, it totally did. The best kind of demo. Yeah. <laughs> and then and, and so then we had to say, okay, can we keep the terracotta block? 
Um, cause really the terracotta block wasn't structural, but you know, it was, it was just kind of infill. It was kind of infill. So yeah. we, we ended up, we, we did it, we patched and repaired all of the terracotta block and then basically just, you know, uh, just ran some furring strips up and down the walls and just, you know, threw drywall up, but it was, uh, wow. It was just one of those things. It's just like, like I mean, how? I mean, that's that's crazy though, right? Because you think like, well, what what if? I don't know. That that corridor was loaded with kids. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's just you have no idea the integrity of all. Well, of that we stuff were doing selective. So, yeah. when we were doing selective demolition, yeah. we were removing things that apparently were holding what that was keeping it in place. You know, like apparently a bunch yeah. of. You know, lockers. steel lockers from the seventies. Hmm. I will say, totally. steel lockers from the seventies clearly well built. <laughs> well built. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't build them like they used to because no, no. the new ones wouldn't do that. They're made out of twenty-two gauge metal exactly. now, and they would just fold you know, exactly like a, like a house of cards. <laughs> what was kind of interesting is, so I was up in the attic um, because we were, you know, we wanted to look. I mean, there was it was like a thirty feet of of additional space up there, and we had kind of contemplated if we augment the structure could we have an occupiable roof and we ultimately thankfully came to our senses and said no. um but as i was like There's so much potential as i was up there and i was like looking around there was a in in one of the corners of that when they were uh, clearly when they put the first edition up in the uh 30s there you know People were having their lunch up there and just tossed their lunch up there. So there was a 1930s newspaper crumbled up. Mm -hmm. It was balled up around a 1930s Coke bottle. And mm -hmm. I, I have the Coke bottle. Um, <laughs> uh, and of course oh, I, I, I took that Coke bottle. Ooh, um, I'll take that. But then when they were doing the early 70s renovations... Apparently, when people were up there, somebody was reading a Jet magazine, and the Jackson Five were on the on the cover, which nice. was awesome. The principal, she took that one. <laughs> Finders keepers. Exactly. Yeah, I was. I w I met a guy, a, a local. He's in the AEC industry. I, I don't think he's an architect uh, in air, in air quotes, but um, he he definitely works in the, on the architecture side, and he bought a house in the town that my address is within that town <laughs> and it's the second oldest house in the town so i don't know which one's the first oldest but he yeah. bought the second oldest and he's like full gut renovation the city's just happy he's not tearing it down and um he so so the siding on the house is it's literally like a barn there is there's no cavity wall it is just like nominal lumber wow. is the siding yeah. of the house you're right and then there's just plaster on the inside, and under the plaster was newspapers. And he found in one of the – pulled out down some plaster, and it was 1902. That's when the house was built. Nice. So 1902 newspaper. And the the main article on that page was written by the owner of the – who built that house. So, so cool. Oh, right? yeah. It's oh, just yeah, like yeah. like to, to – find that stuff it's like forensically deconstructing things and being careful as you're doing it and you find these amazing little gems that trace the history of the actual building oh, yeah. you know i, well, maybe, I can't even imagine a... it was actually a house but but it was it was like that's how they built yeah. it there yeah. in in that case back then i thought it was so interesting what's great is it's filled with era newspapers so you get to yeah. sort of see what the town was doing in 1902 right which right. you know, right? Is... And and he ran the newspaper, right? He worked at the newspaper, right? And oh, what's interesting now is he's this guy's going to go back and 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 renovate this place, and so there is literally no cavity wall. You cannot do, in you can't blow in insulation. You can't tear it all down and put in bat because there's no cavity wall. It's literally plank siding that is that is the the structure of the walls of the house. So he actually is going to build on the outside of the house instead of taking away square footage on the inside okay. and, and providing 
the R value. I just it's such an interesting challenge to yeah. to kind of like nobody had any idea it was like this when he bought it, right? And now you start to take it apart and it's like, oh man, this is a bigger challenge than yeah. I thought it was. It's like to the schools, I mean, thinking about the schools that you've worked on, it's like you you dig out this portion because you're gonna add on and you figure out that there's actually no foundation under there. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. that is that's crazy. And because we were doing a lot of modifications, what was interesting about it is that we end up, end up having to underpin and create a foundation for the building. And to to watch the way that they did it in two-foot increments through hundreds of linear feet, hundreds and hundreds of linear feet all the way around the perimeter of this building. But because of the historic nature of the building and the site and everything else, any time that they were doing, so like we had to say, like, okay, we found out there was no foundations. Plan B or, or plan A, we've got to now add foundations. I, I believe at first we were going to do like helical piers and basically put them into the brick wall. But because we were assuming that there was a foundation there, it would have, but when we when we found out that basically the if we tried the method that we were originally going to do, it would have just crumbled the walls. So you basically had to come in, dig out from underneath it, and just build a piece at exactly a time. Exactly, because you time. can't like leave the whole and, thing unsupported. It would just and, crumble into the hole yeah. that you dug. Right? Exactly. And so you know, <laughs> had new foundations Jeez. basically all the way around this place, and it was uh, it it was it was really amazing to kind of see how we did this but it was just it was just it was some crazy stuff and and yeah some of the the way that they built you you question it's just like well why did they do that but then you look at it you're like we definitely aren't going to do that any you know we we won't do that now but what's amazing is like the dimensional lumber that they had back then the like nominal lumber it's just like when they had like four by twelve beams you know, and you're just like in their true four by twelves and they were cutting them out you know because like some areas we were we were cutting them because um, of the modifications that we were doing to the building there was one portion in the 1930s one of the 1930s editions that we had to basically rebuild the walls so we cut out all of the the interior foundations we shored up all of the exterior walls and then basically came back in with a steel frame and pinned the walls back to it. And so all of this old nominal lumber was unused. I mean, like, you know, we, we pulled it all out and mm -hmm. I kept trying to convince him. I'm like, just give me those planks right there. Like, let me take all of these and, you know, just drop them in the back of my truck and I'll take them home. They would. not I'll figure out. Oh, no, they, I, I think they, <laughs> yeah, it was just like, can you just imagine like thinking like a table or benches or whatever oh, with, yeah. you know. No, this... there's a huge, huge market oh, yeah. for that reclaimed lumber now. Yeah. yeah it's amazing. M my my dad is, is working on his house here in, in town and it's, uh, he, he's buying a bunch of that stuff that's old barn siding oh, that was awesome. white oak and, uh, you know, just planing it down and, and it, it looks incredible. Yeah, yeah. Right. And the, the, the stock that that came from, like you just can't get that anymore, yeah. right? Like it, it's like comparing old growth redwood yeah. two by fours yeah. to the crap that you buy at oh, Home yeah, Depot. Yeah. It it doesn't even compare. It just just doesn't exist I mean, anymore, you, or it's protected, oh, yeah. and it needs to exist. Yeah, when you see the stuff that that you know that are in these old buildings, and then you walk into Home Depot, like you said, and you basically like poke at a. It's it, wet. It's squishy. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you can leave and, a dent. And it's doing this. Gosh, yeah. 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 I've been looking yeah. for some lumber to for a project around here, and you see the cupping and the warping and everything, and it's just like. Yeah. You have to pick it out board by exactly. board by board. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We've been all over the map all with over. this. This is this was great. Great story time. Uh, I hope I hope uh, it's appreciated. Sorry if I scared yeah, anyone. Because that was fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff all right man all right. see you next time thanks